Most of us have a very strong opinion about abortion. This video is going to show you just how baseless that opinion is. It's easy to pick a side and never reconsider it. We don't really like to think about heavy things for too long. But this is a disgrace to logic, and in the case of abortion, it's unforgivable. Now, I won't be arguing whether abortion is okay based on religion, feminism, or what your president says. Abortion is a purely ethical issue. Everything else is a tactical factor for influencing opinion, structuring law, and making us feel better about ourselves. The only thing that I'll be asserting is that the premeditative murder of an innocent human being is wrong. But does this statement concern abortion? Does abortion equal the premeditative murder of an innocent human being? When does one become a human being? What qualifies one of humanity or personhood? Intelligence, development, viability, consciousness, uteral implantation. Is a 25 year old more of a person than a two year old? Is a mentally delayed man not a person? Is someone in a coma not a person? Is a woman with Alzheimer's less of a person than she used to be? Oh, I got it. It depends on dependency, right? Does the fact that the fetus depends on the mother to survive negate its humanity? It's a burden, right? So you can justifiably flush it out like a parasite. Well, by that logic, you can get rid of three-year-olds. Three-year-olds are way more of a burden on a mom than a fetus. Maybe it only counts if the baby's inside the womb. Ah, uh, okay. But then what about if it's like halfway out of the mother? What if it's born but still attached to the umbilical cord? All of these distinctions are laughably arbitrary, but they are there. There are currently three countries that allow abortion up to the moment of birth. China, North Korea, and Canada. Yes, peace-loving Canada only defines you as a human being once you have fully exited the birth canal. Complete insanity. Consider this logic. A woman that carries a fetus for nine months and then gets an abortion the day before delivery has done nothing wrong. But a woman who has a baby prematurely and then stabs it shortly after its birth has committed murder. This does not compute. In 1991, two midwives caused the death of an unborn child due to negligence. Now because the child died while still in the birth canal, nobody was charged because it wasn't human. In 1996, a woman shot her child in the head as it was exiting her birth canal and was not charged with anything because it wasn't fully outside of her body yet, so again, not human. So maybe we become human at some crucial stage of development. When is this magical moment? Maybe it's when the fetus attains consciousness. Unfortunately, the science is behind on that one. Some say consciousness begins as early as 24 weeks, but doesn't actualize until months after the child is born. Perhaps we judge it by when it can feel pain, which can be as early as eight weeks. What about brain activity? Six weeks. Heartbeat? Five weeks? Let's end this at the beginning. Conception. Human life begins at conception. The zygote contains all the necessary material for a human being. So how is it not a human being? I'm not trying to be extreme. I'm just saying that this is the only definition that's independent of variables and interpretation. It is the only unarbitrary way to define when a human life begins. So if we care to use a consistent definition of a human being, then the premeditative murder of an innocent human being is morally wrong applies to the fetus. Therefore, abortion is always morally wrong. The issue that most people logical people have with this assertion is that it's way easier to empathize with a grown woman than a zygote, embryo, or fetus. Therefore, we tend to rationalize abortion in very creative ways. We use language. A happy expectant mother uses words like baby and miracle, but if the pregnancy is unwanted, we use terms like cluster of cells, blob, parasite. We tend to put more value on life the further along it is in stages of development when it comes to the conversation of abortion. And although late abortions are much more cruel, there is no moral difference between an early and a late abortion. And if you do attribute more value to a more developed being, then you have to make peace with the fact that a 10-year-old is less valuable than a 70-year-old. We also rationalize with things like women's rights. 
I used to subscribe to this argument when I was like 15 and my brain was still developing and stuff. Being pro-choice has become this trendy liberal stance because it's associated with female empowerment. Supporting the movement has become some kind of democratic duty of all females. But abortion has nothing to do with women's rights. It's purely a moral issue. But if you're rational and science-minded, then you'll say that 80% of eggs never implant. This just means that nature is cruel. It's a null argument. But some women aren't fit to raise a child. They're not ready. They're too young. No, they don't want to raise a child. They don't want to be ready. Most people aren't ready for anything until it happens to them. And some people plan to have children and end up being terrible parents. This isn't even an argument. But if a woman is financially insecure, surely she shouldn't be bringing a kid into a world of poverty. People raise kids with zero money all over the world and to assume that they have shitty lives because they're poor is one of the most offensive things that there is. So many incredible, talented, successful people were born into very difficult circumstances and raised by single mothers and they turned out to be fine. So next time you rationalize that someone is better off unborn than poor, remember, you're kind of an asshole. What about rape? Isn't there a huge difference between getting an abortion because you're not ready or because someone raped you? Morally, there is not. Killing an innocent life is always morally wrong. But that's not to say that we can't empathize and understand women in harsh circumstances. A woman should not have to go through scrutiny when choosing to terminate an early stage pregnancy that was caused by rape yet she should still go through a mourning process and understand that this was not her right, it was a choice. Terminating a pregnancy, even if that pregnancy was the result of rape, is still a selfish action. The woman is choosing her well-being over a child's life. I know how incredibly harsh that sounds, and to be perfectly honest, if I was raped and had no access to the day after pill and got pregnant, I would consider getting an abortion, but I certainly wouldn't think it was morally excusable. The reason for abortion does not change the action of abortion. So what's my point? Okay, abortion is always morally wrong. What do we do? Do we throw women in jail? I would like to live in an ethical society where we value human life. When we tolerate the termination of babies up to the moment of birth, then we are no better than the dogs that eat their young. We are paving our way to devolution. We cannot condone the killing of human life because of a court decision in the 70s or with regards to Canada of a court indecision. We cannot condone the killing of human life based on arbitrary distinctions and excuses. With the law being what it is now, the termination of any pregnancy should be seen as a heavy moral decision. The law will be what it will be and women will do what they will do. It's not the law that influences human behavior. It's the collective societal consensus which allowed the law into existence in the first place that influences behavior. There aren't more abortions because it's legal. There are more abortions because we think it's no big deal. This is much bigger than law. This is about valuing life. Pick up a little cold hands. It's just another feeling. But it makes my day.